with some pony as amazing as you not have a very special some pony on Hearts and Hooves Day? That look, right there, made me a Cheerilee fan. A look that says, not this again. It's one of the things I enjoy about the episode Hearts and Hooves Day. We saw three characters who didn't have a date set up, and it didn't bother them. Forget the episode, that's something I like about Friendship is Magic overall. While I'm not against the main six finding significant others and forming a romance, I like that it's not a requirement. For most, it's not even a goal. So how strange then that this show also has one of the best representations I've seen of a married couple. And no, I'm not referring to our royal newlyweds. I'm talking about a pair that has been there since the start and, paradoxically, doesn't get enough love. Join me, won't you, as I celebrate the cakes. I find that, as I get older, the fairy tale weddings lose their appeal. Not just because I'm an old curmudgeon, but because I look at the themes around entertainment and weddings, and it's kinda scary. For girls, the image of the fantasy wedding sets this standard of perfection which can birth an entire generation of bridezillas. For guys, it's not just the end of the story, we're told that it's the end of freedom. Especially in comedies, marriage is treated as a disaster. A surrendering and forsaking of the much-defended bachelorhood. A victory of a woman to wear down a man's defenses and ensnare him into a commitment. Why are we so quick to define marriage as the old ball and chain rather than the start of a new life? Hence my adoration for the cakes. A couple that may not impress viewers right away. After all, they're married before the series even starts. We saw nothing of their courtship, and even the comics haven't touched on that. They've never had an episode focused upon them, and with the overwhelming hype behind the marriage of Cadence and Shining Armor, the cakes may not seem all that prominent. Yet, part of what attracts me to this couple is the fact that No Pony is trying to make a big deal out of them. They don't have to prove anything. Cadence and Shining Armor are a fairy tale couple, and that appeals to many. Yet, while the story of a handsome knight and the beautiful princess is tried and true, how many stories focus on a pair of bakers? Right. Point taken. Mr. and Mrs. Cake have never tried to put on a grand display of their love beyond cute nicknames. Instead, they seem to live it every day. Each spouse has had a moment of taking the lead. Empty teacup at four o'clock! Yeah, I see it, honey bun. We'll frost it when we get there. Come on, sugar plum, tick tick! But I never get the sense that one is in charge and the other subservient. They approach everything as a team. Granted, we've seen Cupcake tending the store on her own a few times. I don't know if Mr. Cake is running errands or baking in the back. That's headcanon territory. Yet I'm not asking for 100% togetherness. Even married couples need space. Though speaking of headcanons, Mr. Carrot Cake. I do have to wonder about your name. I have a hard time picturing Cupcake with a different name. So did you... Your marriage certificate? You used to be named Carrot Stick? Good call, dude. Good call. Speaking of carrot sticks, the second thing I enjoy about this couple are their designs. For a good while, both of them enjoyed entirely unique appearances. Mr. Cake is leaner and taller than your average stallion, and Mrs. Cake is shorter and more rounded, not to mention that mind-boggling mane. How much styling material must you go through, Mrs. Cake? Well, that's impressive and all. But if you'll kindly shift your eyes towards Ponyville's newest landmark, you'll see the amount of hair gel used in a single episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know why, their hair has to be inorganic by this point. As the series has gone on, more ponies have appeared using similar body types. Flim and Flam, Trenderhoof, Toe Tapper and Torch Song, even that book delivery pony from Rainbow Rocks. With each use, the designs become a little less unique, and yet Mr. and Mrs. Cake remain two of the most visually distinct ponies in the show. But wait, there's a contradiction here. I criticize Flash Sentry for being designed to look good standing next to Twilight, so what about these two? They've got the perfect yin-yang balance going on. One's tall, one's short, one's thin, one's plump. Yellow, blue, male, female. Pick a difference and they got it. For me, the big difference is that the cake's design balance reinforces their relationship without serving as a substitution. Yes, they were literally made for each other, and yet it doesn't stop at a physical theme. The cakes don't seem to enjoy deep characterization, but they're more than superficially nice. In fact, my favorite moments are seeing how they're put to the test. From Mrs. Cake's sweet but strained patience, Oh, yes, much better. To Mr. Cake's stress management. And while many second-tier characters seem limited to interacting with just one member of the main six, the Cakes have had dealings with many of them, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders, and Spike. Of course, I'm also impressed that they've essentially adopted Pinkie Pie, and are two of the few ponies who know how to reel her in. <laughs> Twilight, you may want to consider their example. I even helped give you a head start. 
What, too much? And while Mr. and Mrs. Cake haven't generated any love-fueled shockwaves, they have accomplished something incredible. This little thing called creating life. Which led to one of the most awkward jokes in the show. Uh, that makes sense, right? If you didn't think of an infidelity joke when you first saw this scene, then congratulations. You are a better person than I. And yes, I know that they're poking fun at the fact that two Earth ponies gave birth to a Pegasus and a unicorn, but what can I say? My humor goes dark places. Yet I don't think their teamwork has been any more apparent than those opening scenes in Baby Cakes, where we see both of them caring for and teaching their children. Uh-uh-uh, pound cake! No pounding things! Uh, 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 we don't chew on things, pumpkin cake. At first, they seem almost too good. Like after a month of parroting, they had it all down. Until... <gasps> Wait! Great cinnamon sticks! I completely forgot! The food for the enormously big catering order we have to deliver today! Oh, with the new twins! We've been so distracted! Wow, it's almost like becoming a parent sends things into chaos, and it's okay to be imperfect. And we see that reinforced across both the TV show and the IDW comics. Mr. and Mrs. Cake delight in their children, yet that doesn't stop them from having bad days. Looking it over, I enjoy the cakes for their imperfections because that seems more true to real life. The fairy tale couple is an ideal that appeals to us when we're young, that we'll find that special someone and everything will be perfect and we'll have our happily ever after because we're so in love. As we get older, we begin to understand that there's still a lot of life to live after that wedding day. There's give and take, compromise, we still have hopes and goals. There will be changes to life that may require giving something up and gaining something new. The cakes are a wonderful example for a young audience. They're working together, living life, and not always enjoying a flawless run. There are things we'll likely never see from these two. We may never see them celebrate an anniversary or have a fight. I'd like to think that Mrs. Cake could advise Pinky on a relationship, yet I doubt we'll see that either. Which is why I keep an eye out in the fandom for works that focus on the cakes. And those can be pretty scarce. Like I say, these two are a subtle presence in the show and it can be easy to overlook them. Which is why I'd like to encourage all of you to check out the Tumblr comic Slice of Life, a series that combines a look at the cake's life down the road, yet never loses a fun spirit. It fleshes out Pound and Pumpkin Cake and shows their parents in a few misadventures. Plus, it has a fantastic explanation for why Bon Bon's voice keeps changing. And, in place of my usual silver quill artwork, I'd like to show some of my favorite works for these two. I'm glad we have characters like the Cakes who can represent that there's more to experience beyond happily ever after. If you're celebrating this day with a special someone, I hope it's a joyful day that strengthens the relationship. If you're not, don't sweat it. Real feelings aren't contained to one day, and there's a lot of life to live, so enjoy it. I'm Silver Quill, thanks for watching.